Welcome, you guys. Happy Tuesday. Um, we're all talking about food and starving. Um, I hope that you're eating lunch. Um, we are excited to be here. We have a really cool lesson for you today. I'm yep. Patty. I'm Carrie. And we are Studio R12 Stencils. We are. We are. Are. We yes. are. We were singing cheers and, oh, you guys, if you catch the beforehand, you'll see all kinds of weird shenanigans. So <laughs> I always get here on time and a little bit early and we were, yeah. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> so we, um, we're Studio R12 Stencils. We are a stencil company and we go live every Tuesday mm -hmm. at 12 p.m. Eastern on Facebook and YouTube. And we tell you all kinds of really cool tips and tricks on painting, stenciling, crafting, DIY projects, Dollar Tree things, yeah. paint, background painting. Everything. Yeah, we're here to answer. We are here for you on Tuesdays. That is our our job. Um, we want to answer your questions. We want to help you solve things, problems yeah. that you're having, um, DIY, um, paint, um, things that go together, you know, like making sure that you're compatible and stuff like that, um, tools to use, um, techniques to do. Today we are going to cover ombre, mm -hmm. and I don't know why I needed air quotes. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> it's a little bit weird. Um, ombre is where you fade a color. You can do ombre through a stencil, yeah. but we're going to do an ombre background today. Mm -hmm. And that is going to be super fun. You're going to yes, love it. You are going to love it. And some other things you're going to love, if you're not already subscribed to our newsletter, go to studior12.com and a big spinny wheel will pop up. You can put in your email address, spin the wheel, and potentially win a coupon to use on your next order. Mm -hmm. And on our newsletter, we send that out so that um, we can tell you tips and tricks, we can introduce new products, we can release new videos. So the newsletter really has a bunch of great information. And there are deals like you would not believe. Mm -hmm. um, we. We are all about putting together things so that it's um, it helps make your creative life more interesting, and we like to share. Yeah. And so we share. We definitely like share. We hardcore share. We share a lot. So, yeah. Um, last week on YouTube, I'm just jumping right into these. Last week on YouTube, we shared the third and final video in our oh. How to Paint with Fire series. Yeah. You guys, this technique, if you have not watched this video, mm -hmm. this technique is you flame the board. So the board on the back looks like this. Um, you flame it, and I'm not going to tell you all the secrets, but the flaming part alone will make you feel like a superhuman. It mm -hmm. is It is a great technique. Um, it drops jaws when people see it. Um, I had We have a hardware store next door. And we were talking about it, and I'm trying to think about the Japanese word for this shushugiban. Yeah, shushugiban. So this is ancient Japanese treating wood to waterproof it, actually. Uh, but so we took it over to the hardware store, and all the men were like, wait, little lady, let me talk to you about this. This is really amazing stuff. And they just wanted to know all about it, and how do you do that? Or one guy whipped out his phone, he's like, I did this yesterday. So it is a very popular technique, and it is worth knowing about. Yeah. And then the stains that we discovered, you guys, that. Mm -hmm. Colored stains. Oh, in the second blew my video. hippie noodle, made my, my face happy, all the things. So um, it, it's, this is a good series. Yes. And but. then currently, so this is April 11th, 2023. Um, just within the last couple of days on our Facebook page, I shared the link to these surfaces that are very well priced. Yeah, they are, you guys, they're under 10 bucks. And we, the bigger sizes of these go up to $89. And this size, it's 18 inches, is under 10 bucks um, as of this date. Um, we feel like there might be a mistake. So, <laughs> so, go, so go stock up. <laughs> yeah, I, I ordered six more yesterday. You know, so they're all, you know, joined and it's the soft wood that has the grain. So it makes the perfect shushugi bun. Mm hmm. Shushugi bun it. Yep. Um, it's all about round things right now. I know. Yeah. Round round is so popular. And one of the things that was in, so there's three videos. There's the how to paint with fire, how to paint and stencil with colored stains. And then the third one has some stencil basics, how to make projects more masculine or feminine. But we also show you three ways to use your wood rounds. So we always talk about round door hangers, but they're... Yeah are some other ways that you could use them around your home. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So this week, yes, we have something that's too heavy for me to lift. <laughs> okay. So this is a concrete stepping stone. 
And so um, when I originally painted um, this butterfly pattern in 2010, um, I had my studio still at my house and I painted my stepping stones and then I had a garden. So I put them out in the garden and they sat out there for two years. They got walked on, dogged on, um, chicken dog. Chicken dog. Chicken dog. Oh, chicken <laughs> dog. We got lots of chicken on going on at my house. And, um, you know, so they just really got the abuse, the sun on them and all of that. And when, when I decided to do a trade show and I wanted to showcase these stepping stones, I went and got them, hosed them off. So in this video, which will be this weekend, I'm going to show you how to make a paint sandwich. And that is how you're going to keep your outdoor projects safe for two years in the sunshine um, using which products and all of that. So that is going to be such a marvelous lesson. And I also show you how to um, paint with sponges. Like I totally did a whole like sponge thing on this video. You are going to love that too because it's a shortcut. I'm excited it's for a good this. Shirt. Yeah, um, the, the the magic fairy dust. Yes, yes, trail. yes, yes. That is one of my favorite techniques. I love doing that. Yes. All right. Ugh, I know. Oh, one more thing. Um, this is helpful hint. Um, as of what are we? We're April 11th. April 11th. Uh, 2023. Um, in the springtime is the only time you will get stepping stones at your at your um, Home Depots and your Lowe's and things like that. So you have to make sure you go find them now, even if you think you want to paint them during the winter to set out next year, get them now, put them in your garage, do what you need to do because they are unavailable the rest of the year. And it is a chore to find them even in the springtime, honestly. Yes. Yeah, yes. So. Um, I think I'm almost done. We have two things, two things left to tell you about. Mm -hmm. One is our sale for today. So today is 4-11-2023. And we have $40 off if you spend $100. So oh. put $100 worth of stuff yeah. in your cart. It can be anything across the entire website. Ooh. And then you're going to use the code TUES, T-U-E-S, 40. And I'll put that in the comments below. And I think it's also in the description. And that ends tonight at 11.59 p.m. Eastern. And you can shop the entire website, including... I was going to say, you're going to hit, you're going to say the magic B word, right? Including that? Oh. Okay. I was, oh, oh. oh, brushes are in stock. <laughs> Brushes are in stock and brushes are basically 40% off, you guys. If you've been waiting for brushes, you've got to get there, get there now. Um, we keep rolling the brush dice and we they're here right now. So yes. get them now. Use that coupon. Um, $100 purchase, $40 off. Okay. Yep. So it's 40%? Yeah, yeah it's 40% off of it's a, $100. It's a yeah. ridiculous number. So like take advantage of these things when you get them. Okay, I want to share this. I love this. This is a mushroom stencil. And you could use this for so many things. You could do a background with it. You could put mushrooms on top of words and letters and things like that. Or your stepping stones. Or your stepping stones. You know, you could do so many things with this little cute thing, and I am, I don't know why I love mushrooms, but I just love the mushroom shape. It's so cute. And, um... This one's on sale. That one is on sale. Yeah, this one is on um, sale. It is, it is on sale today only for 40% off. Yeah. So, we have So, all this, by itself. All by itself. Yeah. Yay! All right. Who's ready to learn about ombre? Yeah, me. More? No, okay. I'm just ready. <laughs> I was like, I pick you. I pick you. Okay. No, I pick you. Go. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, um, I am going to show you how to do some ombre. I want to share um, a different kind of ombre, and we will link a video to this one. Mm -hmm. um, this is where you ombre colors and fade them from one color to the other, to the other, to the other, like that. And there is a video on this. Um, it's a super simple technique, and you want to see this because it is such a great unique background moment. We ought to do background month one month. Just okay. do backgrounds. I think that sounds like fun. I love painting backgrounds. Okay, so I've got my Mylar cut into small sheets. Um, these are our reusable um, palette paper. Um, the palette paper became unavailable, supply chain shortages. Um, so we sell these big long um, 20 inch or 30 inch. Are they 30 inches long? 30. 30 inch long sheets that are this wide and you can cut them into palette paper sheets. And then we have a video on our YouTube channel that shows you how to clean your stencils. And this is what we cut our stencils out of. These so are roughly 31 by eight inches. Yeah, and, and that's 
They're a scrap piece, so we are reusing a piece that would normally either cut a six by six out of or something like that, but um, it just makes the best palette paper and I don't miss the pad of palette paper at all. So let's talk about ombre. Today we're gonna do three colors of yellow and we are going to use a sunshine stencil. So we're gonna go from um, a light to a medium to a dark and you wanna choose colors that go well together. If they don't go well together, I don't think these two um, go very well together, but I'll show you a secret about that when we get started. Um, so what we wanna do is we're gonna first base coat to be completely based in your middle color. Generally speaking, it'll be your middle color. Can you uh, tell me, mm -hmm. please, the, the colors. colors? Yes, that's such a good point. Um, so we are, number eight is our base. Okay. Um, and it's all about the base. It is all about the base. <laughs> it has been all day. All day, but that song is going through. Um, the highlight is going to be 77, and the, um, the dark is going to be 25. Okay. And then I'm using a dense, um, a high-density foam roller. They look like this. And I keep them, uh, make sure you clean these really well. That's in our How to Clean Your Brushes video. Um, you guys, we put all the resources online. There's no reason not to know how to do any of these things because we've got, are we nearing 300 videos? I think we're over 300. We're over 300 videos and all about doing different techniques. Um, if you can search it, you can go onto our channel and actually search our channel and look for videos that have that stuff um, if you like the way we do this. And by the way, if you do like it, Give us a thumbs up because YouTube YouTube likes that stuff. So we have to play the YouTube game. Yeah, and we are, um, oh, as are we of close? today, only a couple subscribers away from 9,000. So if you're what? not subscribed, go do it now so we can yeah, get that. So we can hit the thing. Yeah. Normally when we hit the thing, we do a giveaway. Oh. So, every thousand or so. Yeah, about every thousand we've been doing nice. a giveaway. So I like it. Hit the thing, do the giveaway. Yeah, hit the thing, do the giveaway. <laughs> 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 we like it. Okay, so um, I personally get these from Lowe's, and they come in this giant pack of them, and you just want to have a pack of them on hand, and then I never, ever, 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 you never do this, say never, ever, in the, in the chat, um, don't store your frame in your wet roller head, because if you do that, this gets rusty, and it stops spinning and turning. Okay, so you never want to do that. And then let me get this, I'll just put it over there. And then if you want to keep your roller available for like the next color or you're gonna do more boards, you can put it in the fold top baggies. And these are just the fold top bags without the Ziploc because the Ziploc gets all kind of junky in there and it makes, a, um, it makes the air able to get in. Paint doesn't dry if it doesn't have air. So that's why paint in a can doesn't dry because there's no air in there. And then as your can gets empty, what happens, right? Your air increases in there. So that's when your paint starts getting cruddy and, and junky and stuff. So if you keep the air off of it, this, we've done a test. It's on many of our videos. Um, we did about four weeks in the baggie and there was no crunchy hard edges and stuff like that, but you do need to use the full top bags. Okay, so now we're gonna go put our frame our handle into our roller. And then I generally will throw this bag away, but if I'm gonna get right back in it, I'll crumple it up and put something on it so air doesn't get in there and start drying that paint, okay? So we're going to shake, shaky. We're gonna get the project wet. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make a wet surface so that we can keep um, we can blend wet in wet. So we're gonna go ahead and roll on. And if you have not sealed your board back in front, your board might bow. This one's got a little bit of flex because it's been wetted with the paint. Um, and so if you don't want that flexing and you don't want any of that, then make sure you use a sealer. Okay, so we're gonna go roll from edge to edge. And then I've got a little secret. I'm gonna Pick that little goober off of there. This is a super fun technique. If you've done this and you love it, let us know. And if you've done it and you do it differently, let us know that too. This is um, such a learning platform here on YouTube and on Facebook. 
So this is where you get to share with other people the things that you know. All right, now we're gonna move kind of quickly, but my secret weapon is my squirt bottle. Okay, so I'm going to go into my squirt bottle and I'm going to give it a little mist to just keep that, it's not misting very well. I have a defective squirt bottle. Mr. 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 Ah, there we go. I think it just needed some priming. I'm gonna roll over that. And now I'm gonna put out my light color. It's important that you do your light color first. And notice that I'm going to put the light, oh, hi, shaky, shaky. Look at that. You can tell we do not use this color very often. So shaky, shaky. Now my board is gonna be drying while I'm talking and shaking. So just FYI, I'm gonna to have to do something about that in just a second. Um, I love it when we have things like that happen when we're on lives because that shows you what to do about it and that helps you be a better painter. So um, I absolutely love that kind of stuff. We did have a question about okay. paint. Um, Cindy McBride said, so when your paint gets junky in the bottle, do you add water or more paint? Mm -mm. I never, yeah, I just shake it, pick out the boogers, you know? Yeah, and I mean, if it's starting to get low, then we just fill it up with more paint. Yeah. But we don't ever add water. Okay, so I'm putting my paint in a strip right there because I'm going to use the nose of my brush. I'm going to wet that again. We need a different priming bottle. Oh, my Lanta. I'm gonna go ahead and roll it in the yellow with that water, just to dampen everything back up. You can't let the paint dry. Um, you kind This is kind of one of those things you wanna practice on your boxes that you get in the mail or something like that, because this, you get like kind of one opportunity and then you gotta do it all over again. So I'm gonna talk quickly and I'm gonna go fast. I'm gonna roll the tip in the paint and then I'm going to push blend that together and that is what's going to make those two colors go together because now i've blended the mama paint and the papa paint and they made a baby paint and the baby paint's part of the family so i am going to roll this from end to end and then i'm going to roll it down and then i'm going to do it again because that is fading into that dark roller i want to bring it even more in okay so you don't want to over blend it and then you walk it down to give it some softness. Okay. Yep. And now the secret of the light color first is we're going to switch because the light color will not be so strong in a second. And the dark color that I'm going to put on next will um, totally take over that light color so I can use one roller and blend. I'm shaking this time. So good lesson, always shake. Oh, and I've got a, got a goober in there. There we go. All right, so I'm going to, that felt like I was bringing the palette paper with me. I'm going to neutralize that yellow just a little bit on there. And then I've reversed this. And now we're going to go into this color, working it into there to neutralize that light color. All right, and then I'll walk over that direction. And now we'll go right on to that dark. And then lift it up. Watch how I'm not blending it yet. So I want to walk it in. I'm painting with my mouth right now. I can see myself making all kinds of face, face shapes. Okay, and now I'm going to go really soft and blend that in. And then I'll start walking with no pressure. Listen to the difference. That roller's not making any noise at all, and that's because I'm not pushing on it. And that is how easy it is to do an ombre. Super easy. And this was a good day to do this. We've had a couple people say, I've tried it in the past. It all blended together. It did not work. Um, I tried and had issues. So I'll be watching this video several times to get it. Yeah. And um, you could do the same thing with the foam brush. Um, you're just going to use, you're going to be doing, you know, big old brush strokes and stuff like that. So um, you could do that as well. I'm going to take this away. 
And yeah. I'm going to share the video from the ombre done. background behind us, the tall porch oh, sign. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. This is an example of what you can do with the ombre, is you can go from your dark orange to your light and just totally make this faded, wonderful, like, focus attention on this. So mm -hmm. um, this is such a great technique. Um, and this video is on our YouTube channel as well. Um, make sure, if you haven't, to subscribe um, so that when we put up really cool stuff like this, like on the videos that we do on Saturdays, we're not bantering. Mm -mm. We're just straight up lessening. Yeah. This is to answer your questions, the banter part. Um, so the other lessons on Saturdays and the shorts and the things that we do are all about just the painting. No trouble. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's been going like that all day. Um, while that's drying, Jackie asks, do you seal then paint the base? Yes, you could do that. You can do that. So we're doing this on um, MDF, and you, we don't typically seal when we paint on the MDF. We just paint straight on it. If we're painting on lumber, then we'll put a sealer down. But on the MDF, we just typically paint on it. But you can absolutely seal before you paint on MDF. Yes, absolutely. Because, um, is this okay to talk while we're doing this? Yeah. Okay. So because this is a super irritating, sorry, um, because this is so wet on wet, um, it is just, that's when you're going to see the bow uh, to your board. That's a good time to be like, I'm going to seal this board. Um, but because of so much paint, it just takes a little bit longer to dry. And there's not really any other way to do this in a live than nope. to dry it. Um, Kelly asked, do you suggest darker on bottom or lighter when doing the ombre on a surface? I almost always darker because of weight. So if you think about your paint colors, um, they have weight. Um, dark has a heaviness and light has a lightness. Um, I didn't mean to go there, but yeah, light, lightness, LOL. Um, but the, um, the weight usually goes on the bottom, in my opinion. Um, you could also do it side to side. You know, you could, there's nothing that suggests that you could not do that side to side. Ooh, pay attention to the edges. So um, we're talking about building a drying box, which would be so lovely to be yes. able to set this in. Actually, you know what I should have done? I just thought of it. I should have made one of these ahead of time and pre-dried it. Sorry yeah. guys. Next time. We were, ask your questions, now's a good time to ask. Um, um, I'm trying to go back through and look at some. Jessica said, I have a difficult time softening the edges of my darker color where the line is very harsh. That is a really good um, point and a really good question. I'm gonna stop this right now because it's mm -hmm. irritating me. Um, <laughs> So when you are making your blend, oh, I stacked those up together. Notice that on my um, palette paper, notice that I have push blended until it makes a good blend here. And once it's a good blend here, then I know I'm safe to go there. So that is a really good way to see like it's time to get going on there. So that's how I would do it is, and when you do your blend, um, I'm gonna put a clean roller on here so you can just kind of see it. Um, when you do your blend, so this is a you know, high density um, foam, I push, like I hardcore push the heck out of that thing. So I'm not doing this stuff, I'm doing this stuff, I'm digging in. So it's really important that you just blend, blend, blend. And you yeah. can also, go one more time, um, you can blend in one place, or then you can walk out, and then you can walk back in, and that will give you the middle blend. You're missing the middle blend is what is causing problems. Okay, so I'm gonna have to dry a little bit more. I'm gonna go over here and just hit it. Hit it, hit it. Um, hit it.
Okay, so we have our stand fake. by while we blow dry. Yes, yeah, stand by. Okay, um, we're gonna put a hello down here. Now my paint is fresh. When you are taping and you have fresh paint, this is a pro tip, okay? When you're taping, have fresh paint. It's important that you tape in two places so your stencil doesn't move around. So I am going to move this up from the edge and I'm gonna tape around my edges so I'm not taping on fresh paint. And that is a really good tip. The reason you tip into, mm -hmm. tape in two places is because um, if you only do one, watch what'll happen right here. Okay, this will rock and roll. Okay, and not the good kind of rock and roll. So now I tape in two places and I can't make that move. So that is why you tape in two places. We're gonna talk about stencil brushes. You guys check that sale out today because um, that is intense. I need a couple of dome brushes. Um, can you grab me? I have some questions really while big we ones. Yeah. Um, do that. Um, do you, so we had a couple people asking about the edges of the MDF. Do you seal the edges when painting MDF surfaces, like if you're using them for coasters? Um, you know, so once you're, especially if you use like a sponge, the uh, um, little round sponges to seal, um, you could do like the whole thing. I don't really pay attention to it. Coasters, I mean, I guess it just depends if you think you're really going to abuse something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead and do that. Um, it just, I haven't. I've got coasters at my house that um, were not sealed at all in their MDF. Um, we printed with the Mamaki ink mm -hmm. on them, and that's a UV ink, and they're just printed right on the top, and they've had dogs, cats, chickens, <laughs> grandkids, <laughs> like wild and woolly household, um, and they are fine after five years, you know, okay. so... Um, I don't think you have to, but if you've got it dirty and you've got your brush out, go for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Pat asked, are you supposed to paint the edges on MDF? Um, I try not to. Um, and if I do, I really love the dark edge. It looks finished. Yeah, it's really going to depend on where you get it from. Most yeah. of the MDF from us comes with the black edging. Mm -hmm. I like the black edging as well because it looks finished, especially when you're doing something like this. If yeah. you ombre this... It might be difficult to ombre yeah. the teeny tiny edge Ooh. to make it match. You just said bad words. <laughs> I would have. I wouldn't want. I would do it. Yeah, we could. Well, I'm actually, yeah, the edge. This edge. Would be the easy. side. This yes. The top and the bottom would be okay, but the Ooh. side might be difficult. Um, now we do paint the sides typically when we do porch signs mm -hmm. always i mean almost always. yeah almost always. well and that gets into a really sticky wicket because if i have spring on one side and winter on the other mm -hmm. what color am i going to do that edge yeah. and so sometimes the raw wood is a good choice and some or not raw but you could seal that um and sometimes it's good just to choose a neutral like gray yeah you know or something like that and that's what i think i like about this burnt edge of this is it's kind of neutral color. Okay, so we're going to go into stenciling basics. If you are new here, you know um, flat stencil brushes, were, they are densely packed, about that big around, and they, when you push on them, when you do the stipple technique, they push their little bristles out and they force their way under the stencil. And the number one searched thing about stencils is how to stop bleeding under your stencil. Okay, and so the way that we do that is we use a dome brush. So this is cut in a dome. It's really dense. It's really, like when you push hard, let's see, hard on this, you're not getting any of that flex under. So this is super important. Um, this is how you don't bleed under your stencils. Um, we have a company right here in town where we teach, we have um, like cork and canvas, but we use boards and stencils. And our customers who have never done any stenciling come in the very first time, they do the thing, their projects are gorgeous. Um, so it is easy to do and you just need a couple less, a couple techniques. One is you're gonna use a dry brush. You never, ever, 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 how many evers can we say? I've done it twice today. On the roller and then on this, you never ever use water, okay? You don't want your brush wet. It can't be damp, it can't be wet. You're going to pick up dry paint, meaning it's paint that I have not put water into. I haven't mixed a liquid medium like a, a sealer into it or anything like that. So it's just 
paint that comes out of the bottle. And then you wipe it off, you offload. If I'm on a roller, I offload. If I'm, on, if I'm trying to go through a stencil, if I'm on a dome brush, I offload. If I use, um, honestly, I did it today. I was using the, um, the jumbo daubers mm -hmm. to do the, a shading technique and I pressed on my paper towel to offload. So anytime you want to blend, you have to, or not bleed, you have to offload. Okay, so blend it off. And then we're gonna go over here. I'm gonna hold that down and we're going to just do a gentle, notice no pressure, I'm gonna swirl. You can do the ch -ch 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 -ch, but this is a really heavy, good size space and you can make little polka dots out of your stencil. So I'm just gonna swirl. It'll take a couple of quick coats, but you'll notice that when I'm doing this, it goes really fast. Okay, so I just give it a light swirl. And I wish we were timing ourselves. 12.31. 12.31, okay, so we started. 12.30. Yeah. So we'll get done with this. I'll pick up a little bit more paint. Honestly, it takes longer to swirl off on the paper towel than it does to... Um, on your project. Yeah. And it doesn't take a lot of paint, so you applied paint twice to do the whole first layer. Yeah, and now this is dry. Um, so I'll reapply, swirl off, and then this is what it looks like right now. We'll put that. Okay, so we're partially covered. And because I'm taped in two places, I can peek. Okay, so I encourage you to be a peeker. You don't have to tell your friends about that. Okay, so then we just swirl again. And... You see it's getting more covered. We'll look at it again with half done, half not. So it'll be about three coats and it'll be done. And so if this is something that you want to do, these brushes are part of that sale that we've got going on today. It is 40% off of a $100 purchase. So you gotta work a little bit for it, but you're gonna save big time. Right, and it's $40 off. $40 yes. off, so, so not 40%. If you, if if you, you get, only buy 100 If you only yeah. buy $100 worth, you. then it's 40, but if you're buying more than $100, it's $40 yes. off. So you're, if you spend 200. It's just $40 off. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so now I'm, what's great about this is I'm dry over here. So what's neat is if I stippled, I would have a lot of wet paint everywhere. I'd have to hit the blow dry. I'd have to do the thing. What's our countdown? 12.33. Okay, so it's been three, three minutes. minutes. You know, three minutes to do a whole stencil and we'll be done in five minutes. Stenciling is amazing for this. And the old way um, to make letters on your boards is number one, you could use a Cricut or something like that. Um, you can use that once. You have to be the designer or you have to go buy designs just like you do with stencils. And then you have to weed it. Mm. And if you make a mistake, you can't reposition it and you have to go cut another one. So, um, and then the really old way to do it is the way I used to do it. And that is to print it out. So buy the design, print it out, trace it with tracing paper, put transfer paper under it, transfer the design, fill in the paint, and do multiple base coats, three base coats, and keep your lines straight because, you know, hand lettering skills is an amazing um, skill set. So, whew, stencils make me so happy because they solve so many problems. If I jack this up, I can reposition it. All right, I have a couple questions okay. for you. Um, Sandy McTeer says... Sandy, hi! Sandy I'm so sorry I didn't get to see you last week. Um, she said, "Do you ever? did you ever tape the edges to keep the paint from getting on it, or are you just careful as you paint out to the edge on when you're base coating? Um, like this, with a stencil? No, when you're oh, base whoa, coating. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, so Sandy, really good question. Um, I, when I'm using my roller, when I did this before we started today, I rolled it with the base color, the number eight. I rolled in the middle and then I used really light pressure all the way around my edges so that I didn't squish over on that dark edge because I didn't want that to happen. And we also recommend when you are going to your edge that you 
push towards push, your edge yeah. rather than pull because if you pull toward the edge there's a chance that if you're applying so much pressure that it can get paint to run down the side of that edge yes it i'll tell you what you guys this is um that technique right there pushing away it's almost like you're sweeping the dirt off of a porch yeah. and versus you wouldn't sweep mm -hmm. like from the edge of the porch in so this is your porch sweeping out and lifting because you kind of lift up as right. you and sweep. And then depending on how you're painting it, you can pull towards you if you're pulling toward the edge. Yeah. Um, and that's really going to be personal preference. I like to I like to pull. So what I'll do is I'll pull toward me at all the edges and then I'll flip my board and pull. Or you can push and then flip your board and push. Okay, so we have Hello Sunshine here. You guys, we have on our website, we have something like um, 7,000 titles mm -hmm. of stencils, and we have five sizes of each, so you can choose your size for your project, whatever you need. Um, I'm going to stop here, put my brush in the water because I'm done using this brush. And you never want to leave your brushes or your rollers out to oxidize with the air because that dries. Let's take a look. Anyway, if we don't have the stencil, then I, I feel like you're not going to find it. Of course, you know, like we have so many. Okay, so I'm peeling off the tape. La la! Yay! If I wanted to, um, I could finish this with a little bit of sanding. I'm going to hit it with the blow dryer, and I'll show you what that would look like. I feel like sanding at the end of your project um, sets it into its background. Um, it's just a really cool finishing thing. What you want to be careful of if you have ombre going on is that you don't sand through the ombre. So I wouldn't use a rough sandpaper. I would use something that's soft. So let me dry it and I'll show you. Make sure you're giving us thumbs up because we want to feel loved today on Tuesdays. <laughs> um, and then I am going to show you this little gem. And this little gem would not be a good idea to use on my light background. So you want to not do that. So I'm going to take this off because it's time has come. And I'm just going to fold it and lightly sand. I'm lightly, lightly. It's like um, rubbing your baby's back. You know, you're not going to be pushing on it. You're going to just softly, gently dust the, dust the flower off your apron, that kind of light. Brush off the dust. That just settles. Um, when you use a stencil, especially a thick stencil, some of our marketplace stencils, not ours, but other people's stencils are super thick. And um, when you use a super thick stencil, the paint collects and collects and collects, and you get this like raised effect, which I personally do not like. So I like my paint. I like it if you rub your hand over it, I like it to be even. Yeah. So it looks like an artist painted it and not like a stenciler painted it. Right. Um, I want the ease of stenciling without the um, stigma. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's 220 grit, eh? Yeah. A. Are you Canadian today? A. Um, a. So one thing I also wanted to point 220 out. 220 grit sandpaper. 220 grit sandpaper. And then with our stencil placement today, mm. so yes. we put our stencil down in the corner. A lot of times when we paint, our stencil fits right on our surface yeah. and goes right in the center. But today's lesson is about ombre. So yeah. if you're going to do a really beautiful background and spend time and technique on it, yeah. you might not want to put your stencil right, right the in the center yeah. and then not be able to see it. So we pulled that down to the bottom so you can still see a lot of yeah. the beautiful background that we painted. Yeah, there's and then there's some really fun, um, we've got some sunshine, um, you know, do you know where those are at? The boards that have the sunshines are right out on the right hand side of the first rack. Um, we've got some really cool stencils that have little sunshine things, and that would be really cool to maybe focus up in the mm -hmm. upper corner really and put light them dusted. together. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that'd be super fun. Hang on, Steve's getting that for us. Um, yeah. So you could totally fit, if I had the stencil, I would mm -hmm. show you, but I would do it upside down. Here, I would do it right there in that yep. corner 
and then just have that be stenciled through. I think that would look adorable. Well, and we also have a pattern stencil that has hand-drawn suns. Oh, So yeah. you could go up and put several hand-drawn suns up in that mm -hmm. edge and just make it tone on tone and not see it very much yeah. just to so, add some Yeah, more. and the neat thing with ombre is then you could go up in here and tone on tone something patterny, be beehive, something mm -hmm. like that, you know, that kind of thing, and it would be amazing. Yes. So I hope that you guys like this lesson. We're not done. Oh, we're not done. What we're we not have? done. What do we have? Goodness gracious. Goodness, I was going for, I'm, no, she's hungry. I'm she's hungry. ready for lunch. I'm we're having, angry. We're having a picnic. We are um, going into the park and eating lunch on the picnic tables. On the picnic tables. Jackie asked, do you trim to redome your brushes? I have some heavy handed friends and I worry that they will flatten my brushes. Um, so buy them their own brushes. This is, <laughs> this is Jackie, right? Jackie, I feel your pain. I was over at boardroom um, in town. We were training new teachers the other day, and I grabbed a handful of brushes, and they were all flat. When you clean, um, where are those perler things? Are they on your desk? No, they were. They were. They're in the drawer. Okay. Oh, but I do have this. Thing, so we'll go here. Um, you know the perler beads that you used to be able to do the little beady craft projects with? You can use those instead of this um, ginger grater. So, um, Jackie, when you have your heavy-handed friends over to paint with, um, when they're, number one, maybe don't let them wash your brushes. Maybe go ahead and just have them put them in water. Um, but when I wash my brushes, I never do this like that. I go around my edges to keep the dome domed. Yes. Um, so that's what I do. And our brushes over here are generally speaking in much better condition than they are over at Boardroom where we have, Lots you know, a rotating bunch of teachers who maybe don't always care. They got, besides the fact that they're getting 25 people's brushes. Right. And five <laughs> each. So now, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> you know, you're just sad. Yes. Yeah. Um, Brenda asks, how much pressure do you put on the paper towel when you're offloading? Um, that's a good question. Let me find a paper towel and let me pretend um, you know what? I'm, I'm pushing down. I am, I'm trying to think of like a, I'm pushing down like, like almost like I'm kneading bread, you know, where you give it a good hard push. Um, I'm pushing medium hard. You know, I'm, if I was really pushing, it would, Steve, can you get this? So if I was really pushing, it would look like this and I would be down to my ferrule. I'm medium pushing. And if I was soft pushing, it would just be dancing on top. So that's that's how hard um, that is. Okay, I can let you be done now. Okay, we can be done. <laughs> you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, please make sure that you give us thumbs up, subscribe, do all the things. You know the you know the drill. Um, we love to be here with you, mm -hmm. and we will see you on Tuesday. Yes.